Salutations crustaceans, I'm Lobster and today we are going to be reviewing the Close Apollo Standard from Close Guitars. Let's check it out. This is the Apollo Bass from Close Guitars. Close is best known for making carbon fiber travel guitars, and they have recently stepped foot into the solid body electric guitar and bass market with the Apollo series. Big thank you to Close Guitars for letting me borrow this bass as well as the Apollo Pro for review. I really appreciate it. Now the Apollo is a very interesting instrument and the approach to this instrument is also very interesting. Close has a very almost cookie cutter approach and I don't mean that negatively. They're trying to provide you with an instrument quickly as well as one that you can customize yourself or they can customize for you. The pickup route underneath this pickguard here, which kind of is reminiscent of a Stingray 5, is actually almost like a uh, swimming pool route, giving you the ability to basically install any pickup configuration as long as you have a pickguard for it. And Close will build you a custom pickguard and even equip it with all the electronics that you'll need here. It's a very interesting service that they offer and it gives you tons of customization options. And I hope to do a custom build on one of these in the near future. Keep an eye out for that. Now let's talk about the specs of the Close Apollo Standard Bass. This is a white Acoma body and I believe there are other colors available as well as a natural finish. And that is paired to this 34 inch scale, 24 fret carbon fiber neck. The nut width of this instrument is 40 millimeters and it's a very comfortable neck profile. I'm not sure of the fingerboard radius off the top of my head, but I believe it's something maybe like a 12 inch radius. It's not a super round one, it's more of a, a flatter radius like what you see in more modern instruments. So that's what we have for the neck here. And then moving up to the tiny little itty bitty headstock that we have up here, we have four Godo tuners and the close logo. Moving back down to the body for the electronics and the hardware, we have two in-house close blackout pickups paired to a volume, volume, tone configuration. For the bridge, we have a 19 millimeter spacing uh, Sung 2 bridge. This is the same type of bridge that we see in uh, Schecter basses as well as FGN and Reverend guitars. So this is a, one of my favorite bridges. It is equipped to allow for string through body construction, however, for the Close Apollo, it does not appear like they have that set up as standard. That being said, I'm not really gonna ding them for that as I do believe they offer that as a customization option, but for the Close Apollo standard, you're kind of getting the bare bones experience, not to say that that is a bad experience in any way. As you're gonna hear for yourself, if you haven't seen the unboxing, that these in-house pickups actually sound really nice. Now let's go ahead and turn around the space. Around back we see a whole lot of nothing. This is a passive instrument, though they do have an active preamp option for an additional $85. That is a three band and will give you a nine volt battery compartment back here as well. So nothing back here for the passive model and we can see the really cool neck attachment. The uh, spacing here is rather wide. So we have the two neck screws down here and two more way up here way wider than what you would get in a fender. And this gives you excellent neck stability, especially considering this is a base where you can remove the neck and uh, break it down for travel. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. And then moving up to the headstock, we see the back of the itty bitty headstock and the four Godo tuners with a close branding. Now, how much does the close Apollo weigh? This particular example comes in at 8.2 pounds, which is pretty lightweight. And I would definitely attribute that to the Acoma body as well as the carbon fiber neck, which has a foam core to reduce weight. And that does not affect stability in any way. This is definitely a stable neck for sure. I have no doubts about the stability of this neck as carbon fiber is an extremely strong material. The fingerboard is also composite, meaning that you won't get any shrinkage with the change in humidity. And finally, how much does the Close Apollo cost? That is a great question. You have a ton of customization options that impact the cost, but the base model that you see here without the travel kit, meaning you don't get the backpack and the cool case, is $13.99, which in my opinion is not bad for a US made base with a carbon fiber neck and in-house pickups. Also, the hardware that they use is very high quality, the construction is great, and overall my experience with this base has been very positive. 
But enough talking about this bass, let's go ahead and play it. You all know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. That is the close Apollo four string bass. I think these blackout pickups for being in-house humbuckers sound great. I think that this bass responds to all sorts of playing where I can really hammer in and like dig in and re really get gnarly. <laughs> But I can also, you know, play softer and more melodic. <laughs> so this is definitely a very flexible instrument. And I can see these pickups working in a variety of situations. The controls may be simple, but you do have a ton of tones at your fingertips here. Now, the Apollo Pro, which gives you an upgraded body material with ash, upgraded hardware, and the option of Fishman Fluence pickups, as well as the whole Fluence pickup system with the two-band preamp and the different uh, preamp voicings, we have a much simpler setup here. But again, the clarity of these pickups is stellar, and we get a lot with just a little, if you know what I'm saying. So here's everything up all the way one more time, and then we'll start looking at the individual pickups. I really have fun with these. This is like just a fun instrument to play. The neck is great, the balance is great, and just, I, I enjoy the tones of these pickups. It, it just is a good instrument. Good job, Close. I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed. <laughs> now let's look at these pickups individually. I'm going to bring down the bridge pickup, so we are soloing the neck. This is their Blackout Series Humbucker again, and it is dead silent. The strings on this bass right now are not the ones that came with the bass, and they are the Stay In Tune Foundation 45 to 105, and I think they sound great here as well. Next, with the neck pickup soloed, let's take the tone down to about 50%. I think the actuation of the controls feels very premium, so that is a nice touch. They're using high quality components here. And here's the tone all the way down. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Next, let's bring the tone control back up, bring down our neck pickup, and bring up our bridge pickup. So we are soloing the bridge pickup, tone all the way open. <laughs> <laughs> Next, let's take the tone down to about 50%. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the tone all the way down. Let's take the tone back up and bring the neck pickup back into the mix. So we have both pickups together at 100%. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I think with both pickups together, this definitely sounds best. Second place is definitely the neck pickup for sure. Uh, but both pickups together, I just think it's a stellar tone. You have a lot of like clarity and crispness, but it's also, you know, very full and warm. Now let's take the tone down to about 50%. <laughs> and here's the tone all the way down. <laughs> Not too shabby. I am digging this bass overall. Let's go ahead and turn the tone back up, leave both pickups open, and see how she slaps. <laughs> I think that's really interesting. 
It's hard to explain, but because of the hollow nature of the neck with the foam core, I feel like it's almost more resonant in a way where you kind of feel the, like, especially with slap, you kind of get a lot more feedback, like, vibrationally on the neck. And I think that's uh, not a bad thing by any means. I think it's really cool, like, you know, the instrument's kind of speaking back to you a little bit. I, I dig that. Now, one downside in regards to slap for this bass, and this applies to the Apollo Pro too, is this area of the neck right here. Uh, the neck is a long neck, and I probably can extend to about 26 frets, uh, but they cut it off at 24 and just have a blank piece of fingerboard here. They probably do that for the sake of, you know, ease of manufacturing, but I wish they would kind of either, you know, kind of cut that away a little bit and just make it flush with the body for the ease of, you know, getting your, your finger in there if you are a slap player. That being said, they do offer to, you know, move back the neck pickup a little bit to give you a bit more room. But I do wish that, you know, they would do something with this little area. Either add a couple of frets and be a, an even cooler bass that has 26 frets, or kind of uh, carve that away a bit. Though that may add to the whole manufacturing cost and complexity. Those are just my opinions, though. Overall, I find this neck absolutely stellar, and just the playing experience is really great as well. Next, I'm going to solo the neck pickup once more, and we are going to slap it one more time. Oh yeah, that is a great tone as well. Really good tone out of that neck pickup. Next, I'm going to grab my pick. We're going to give it a little pickin' with the neck pickup soloed. Next, let's bring the bridge pickup back into the mix so we have both pickups engaged with the pick. So for pick playing, uh, I would definitely raise the action a little bit, but that's just my personal setup. Finger style, I get no fret buzz when I'm playing, even digging in, it sounds really good. But for pick playing, I'd probably adjust the action, raise it just to uh, reduce that fret buzz a little bit. Uh, that being said, again, playing experience is absolutely stellar overall, and let's go ahead and throw some drums behind this bass. So here are my final thoughts on the Close Apollo Standard Bass. Overall, I think this is a killer bass. I think that there could be some design tweaks in regards to the end of the neck here that could make it even better, but overall the execution of everything on this instrument is absolutely stellar. They are using high quality components in regards to the hardware, the materials with the carbon fiber, and the pickups which sound great. 
these passive in-house humbuckers definitely have a beautiful voice, a lot of clarity, and a lot of, I guess, modern crisp tone, but a lot of warmth surrounding that as well. And I think overall, just the, the tonality of this is, is killer for what you're getting. Uh, for those looking for something a little bit more flexible, I mean, again, you can get any electronics you want in this. Like, they'll do it for you, or you can do it yourself. They'll make you a pick guard. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the possibilities are endless, and you can just do a lot here. But out of the box, just the bare bones standard model is no slouch by any means, and I hope I've demonstrated that. I'm very impressed. I think that this is, for the price, one of the better values on the market right now, especially for an American-made instrument. So what am I going to rate the Close Apollo? Ugh. I'm gonna rate this bass. Four claws out of five. An absolutely stellar bass. I think that they are on the right path and I can't wait to see what else Close is gonna make. I hear rumblings of a five string model coming in the future and I would love to check that out as well. I am excited to see what they do with the neck profile, how that will play and balance because this bass is comfortable, it plays well, it sounds great, it's comfortable to play in just like any position. For essentially a first attempt at a bass, Close has hit it out of the park here. The neck profile, the neck construction, and the way it attaches is very uh, cool and unique in my opinion. The fact that they're not necessarily marketing it as a travel base, but more so giving you that flexibility of having a case and the base that can break down easily without the need to constantly unscrew and rescrew into raw wood. You have threaded inserts on the neck that make for great longevity when you have a base that you may be disconnecting the neck off of multiple times. You're not gonna have any issues there. And I think just the electronics, the hardware, everything that you're getting here is high quality. And for an American made instrument, I think $13.99 is a very good bargain. Things I would improve on personally are just, you know, the end of the fingerboard here. I wish they would do something more with that. Either add a couple of frets or kind of carve that away to make it flush with the body. Other than that though, I can't think of anything else that I would really fault here. The folks at Close definitely did their research when it came to designing the space and making it one that would suit a lot of different players. The styling may not be for everyone in regards to the headstock design. I personally dig it, and it's one less thing to, you know, ding off of the ceiling. <laughs> so just the, the overall form factor of this instrument still being a full-scale 34-inch bass, the high-quality electronics, the high-quality bridge, high-quality tuners, everything about this screams quality. So I definitely appreciate that. I think Close is on the right track, and they've done a great job here with the Close Apollo Standard. Let me know what you all think about this bass down in the comments below. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord channel, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the close Apollo standard bass. And as always, until we groove again.